So now we're going to be showing how we can derive um, a demand curve from utility maximization. So we've uh, seen before how we can use uh, utility maximization to see what are the optimal quantities at what different levels of consumption does this individual uh, optimize uh, her utility, maximize her utility. And we're now going to be seeing how we can get from that to a demand curve. So this is uh, straightforward, but uh, still useful to have um, have uh, gone through, okay? So let's uh, continue looking at the case where we have two goods. We have E and F, entertainment and food, and there's a budget constraint. Uh, how much can this individual consume? Well, uh, she can afford to, I mean, her, her cost of uh, consuming E will be given by the price of E times number of units of E plus cost, you know, there are two goods we think here. So price of food times number of units of food, that's whatever she spends on food. And this has to be less than or equal to income. And you know, this, um, we can add time periods, et cetera, but so far there's no point in saving. So uh, it will be equal here. Okay, we want to be able to draw this to illustrate. So we uh, reshuffle, uh, solve for one of the goods, in this case, E. Okay, so divide through by PE and uh, reshuffle, and we get that how much E that the individual can buy depends on the income over um, divided by the PE minus PF, oops, over PE times number of units of F. Okay, so let's uh, let's draw this uh, and um, like like this, where we have them, uh, we have the number of units of F on the horizontal axis and the number of units of E on the vertical axis. Okay, so let's look at uh, different cases here. So first assume that, um, assume that I equals 90 and that PE equals one and PF equals one, okay? So the body constraint will then be equal to E equals 90 divided by one, you know, minus one of one times F. So this is how the body constraint looks for this individual. If she uh, only buys some, um, only buys entertainment, she can buy 90 units given that, um, each costs one, uh, but the more uh, F that she wants to buy, the less E can she afford. And in the book, we show that, look at a particular case of indifference curve or utility function, uh, which would give the optimal quantity 45 for each. This is not important. The, the important point is that the combination of utility function and a budget constraint gives a set of optimal quantities, okay? So these are not just you know, some quantity in general, it's a very specific quantity. So now comes the little uh, thing that's sort of uh, uh, new here in some sense is that what are we saying here? Well, we're saying when the price of food was one, this individual consumed 45 units of, of food, okay? So another way of saying that would be, well, we have one point on a demand curve. So, so let's draw the demand curve here. We have an axis, vertical axis, PF. Sorry, this is getting a bit messy. And we have QF, the number of units of food here. So we have at the price of one, we had 45 units of food being, um, being demanded, okay? So that's one point on a demand curve. Okay, so let's uh, continue. Let's look at another one. So, you know, one point does not make a curve. Um, so let's assume that uh, PF instead is equal to two. Okay, so the body constraint then equal to 90 minus two over one times F. Okay, so it's twice as steep. If you only buy E, you know, the price of food uh, doesn't matter, but as soon as you want to buy some some uh, food, um, 
you know, the price of food matters and you will be able to buy less than you were uh, in the case where, um, or for a given consumption of food, you will be able to buy, buy less E if you if you uh, meet these new prices. Okay. So at this new higher price, there will be a new tangency point in this particular case. So it happens that quantity is 15. And 15 again, it's not important that it's 15. Important point that there is an optimal solution to this. And uh, we can, so, you know, given the price of two, how much is consumed or demanded? Well, 15 units, okay? And just to uh, uh, take one more example to make it um, more whole, we say, well, assume now that the price of food instead instead drops to 0.5, okay, so by the constraint now, again, 90 minus 0.5, I'm not dividing by one here, or I am, but I'm not writing it up. Um, and we have like this, sort of flatter uh, body constraint like this, uh, new optimal quantity, point of tangency, which in this case we solve for 120. Okay, so that gives us a third point on a um, demand curve. Okay, and we can then tie these points together and we could conceptually think of uh, a large number of such uh, such uh, changes keeping other things equal income and the price of e uh, and this um, is a demand curve okay so simple in principle uh, but a useful uh, fact for many um, things that we want to examine in economics uh, where we can tie a demand curve, something that we can observe, uh, different choices at different prices, to something that we, in principle, cannot observe uh, okay, uh, in different curves and utility functions. Okay.